have lost five round fights to former champions Chris Smith it was a technical decision against Charbay Mitchell and for K-9 an ugly close contender loss to Stevie Forbes one other note Chris Smith has only had one fight in the last 15 months Chris Smith in the black K-9 in the blue last time Smith as you alluded to was in the ring seven months ago and Smith has lost three of his last four and you touch on Joe all two good fighters one of them a former world champion and you mentioned the gaps of inactivity in Bundridge's career three of them one two years and nine months one one year and eight months and one one and a half years Contrasting fight plans for these two combatants. As we said in the fight plan just a little while ago, Bundrich wants distance. He wants to be able to use that jab, not just to score, but to keep range where he can set up his favorite punch, the right hand. And Smith, well, he wants to get close. If there's distance, he's not winning this fight. But when he gets close, he doesn't want to take on too much punishment incoming from that right hand. He wants to try to move his head, get in close, and then work. As good as Bundridge can work outside, he is not a fighter who does much on the inside. You can really see the comfort level on the outside for Bundridge, Joe. And you can see inside, He's not very comfortable. And Ties up there. You can see that he understands where his strengths are, though, and where he's not strong, as you just said. Tying up on the inside, knowing that he's not really equipped to work well in those tight quarters. Final minute of this first round. You see the total punches so far. Real-time punch track numbers there. 115 to 7 advantage. You know, you talk about first rounds and K-9 Bundridge. It was back in May 2005 when he was involved in a rare double knockdown in a first round. It came against Saku Powell. Both men continued on after that, but then moments later, K-9 was TKO'd. First loss of his career. It came in the first round. I think that Bundridge is going to have to land something big, and if it's something big, it's going to be with the punch he's most confident with, the right hand, early on for two reasons. One, there'll be an opportunity because Smith has been known to be a bit of a slow starter. And the other reason is Smith's so much more experienced, Bundridge may have to slow him down a little bit, get his respect. End of one. From the last round, here's some illustrations of the fight plan. We said Bundridge needed to use distance with the jab and set up the right hand. And right there, you could see Smith jabbing and tilting in a little bit. Maybe leaving an opening later on for Bundridge to land that favorite punch, the right hand. Just landed a right hand to start off this second round. K-9, Cornelius Bundridge in the blue. Chris Smith, the veteran New Yorker, in the black. Very important fight for Chris Smith. He's lost three of his last four, all against named fighters, but he needs a win. And here against K-9, a guy with a lot of popularity coming off the contender, a fight that Chris Smith thinks will get him right back to where he wants to be. He even made the comment that this fight is as important as a title fight to him because it's going to really determine the remainder of his career. Body shot from K-9. Put a right hand right on the belt. Remember Max Schmeling before that huge up upset with a young Joe Lewis when he said I sure. see something well I see a couple of things good news and bad news so far early on for Smith one I see he can get in close which he needs to do without getting caught with the right hand but I also see when he gets in close he's not working he's allowing himself to be smothered Smith to be effective he must correct the latter Get in close, but there's no sense in getting in close if you're not going to keep yourself free to work. Again, contrasting fight plans for both of these pugs. Bundridge, as long as there's distance, he's going to feel comfortable in this fight that he's getting his way. 
Smith always looking to get close. Again, watch Smith. It's not just whether or not he gets close without getting caught the right hand, but it's does he stay in there or does he go back out without making Bundridge pay a price? It's one thing to be aggressive, Joe. You hear it all the time, but you must hook up that other word with it. Effective aggression. Smith lunges in with a right hand. Bundridge still steady, firing back right hands of his own. Just knowing the two styles and dispositions of these two fighters, early would figure to be long to Bundridge. Ball if field Smith's, warning that right hand landed on the hip. If Smith's going to have his night, it's going to come in the middle and late rounds where the pressure starts to pay off big for Smith. Smith and Bundridge through two. Friday night fights in Tacoma, Washington. Man, what do you know about Washington boxing? Pretty good resume of a list of famous fighters from this area. Pretty good water, I would say, that they're drinking in this area to come up with this stable of fighters. Freddie Steele, Al Holstack, Sugar Ray Seals, and Leo Randolph and Davey, Davey Armstrong on maybe the greatest Olympic boxing team of all time. And, of course, Greg Haugen, who beat Vinny Pazienza one time. Well, actually beat Pazienza two out of three fights. And Pazienza, of course, one of our favorite fighters. Pretty good, stable fighters on that list. Chris the Mechanic Smith in the black trunks coming out to action. Round number three scheduled for 10 against K-9 Bundridge. The star of the contender season two. He upset Michael Clark. Scored a knockdown in the fifth round in his first fight on the contender series when he was the last man picked of the 16 when they were divvying up the teams. Fought with a chip on his shoulder and still does to this day. The difference is he's improved so much in the course of the past year. I mean, he really almost dropped, dropped our jaws when we saw him at the Staples Center against Bravo, utilizing the jab, throwing punches and combinations. He was like a different fighter. It's amazing what some confidence injected into somebody can do for a career. Can improve somebody leaps and bounds. Smith now comes in with a right hand on the inside, and Bundridge tries to tie up. He does so. And now Smith gets loose. Well, we talked about the offensive opportunities for Bundridge on the outside using the jab to keep distance and looking to score with the right hand. If he's going to win the fight, Bundridge is going to do it in great part because he's going to be able to land right hands. For Smith, the offensive opportunities will be two. One is to get inside and make Bundridge stand up straight and pull out, where then he can walk him to a left hook. Also, right hand opportunities will be there for Smith too, Joe, because as you can see, as Bundridge goes back, it's with the left hand low. Just did it moments ago. Smith scored a right hand. Much better round here at the halfway point in his third round for Chris Smith. Warning from Paul Field about tying up under the arm. Digging underneath now is Smith on the inside. Bundridge places a right hand to the body. Off balance there. A couple right hands come in from K-9. Again, you can see the first thing on the mind of Bundridge after they break is to make sure quickly he gets separation. He understands he can only win this fight if there's distance between him and Smith. Distance where he can get full leverage on that right hand. Watch when they break. Smith will stay there, look to come forward. Bundridge immediately trying to make sure there's a gap. Exchange here at their moments, the last final moments of this third round. A much more productive round for Chris Smith. 